We're here today to talk with Bill Muldoon, Executive Vice President of Aviva, on the issue of migration of automation and control systems. Uh, Bill, thanks for being here. Thanks, Russ. I appreciate there's the opportunity. A, there's a couple issues to talk about. Uh, it's very significant, this issue, I think, that most owner-operator companies are going to face. ARC has talked about the $65 billion worth of automation control systems that are going to have to be replaced and the issue of migration. Can you give us some insight as to uh, when an owner-operator should start to plan for this event? I mean, you certainly can't run to fail. That's not an option that's acceptable to anyone. So what are your thoughts on the, on the issue of the timing of this planning? You know, Russ, good question, and I think it's uh, really twofold. It's really going to be a function of when there is a necessity to change because the new operations require the control system to do something they haven't done. Or the second aspect of the things are is that it will just potentially cause a failure to operations. That could be through uh, spare parts not being available or other types of areas. So I think it's an area that is, is going to be addressed and is being addressed on a regular basis globally. I think you also will find is that uh, if the system's doing a good job, people are going to let it do a good job until they start to see that necessity happen. You know, there's, there's a lot been written and talked about in workshops and so forth about once you get into the execution phase, the nuts and bolts of the actual migration steps, and that's fairly well documented. But, you know, there's another area perhaps that is uh, even more important, and that's the what we might term as pre-planning. What, uh, what recommendations would you have for an owner-operator, and how important is this pre-work, pre-planning effort before you get into the actual migration phase? Well, I think it's an important process for any capital project, whether it's brownfield, greenfield, and I think that, you know, as what they say, good work early pays off dividends in the return, and I think that's important for us. So we, we can't overlook that. We know that the mechanics are there, and I'm fine with that aspect of things, but a lot of times it's the unknown. What do we not know, you know, type of areas? And so I think that, you know, today, conventionally, most companies, OOs, EPCs, major automation contractors and all that, will put manpower to throw out there and find what they have. So you have the as designed, as built, and as run, and usually as run changes multiple times and none of the as built or as designs get updated at all. So, or if you can even find the information, that's another aspect of things. You know, if you had a facility that was built 50, 60 years ago, you might have to go in and scan that to have an understanding. So I think Aviva offers some uh, opportunities, we think, to help reduce on scope, schedule, and time to accomplish that. You're still gonna have to throw manpower to go after some things, but we think we can aggregate it in a way that might bring value in the downstream effect. Sounds like a lot of those attributes that your offerings have really relate to reduction in cost of the project, is that true? Absolutely, reduction in cost because it's manpower. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna have to go feel walk a line if you don't have a drawing. But if you have electronic data or you can put it into an electronic format or some form that you can use, that's something you can use today in your actual design all the way down through the deployment of your migration and frankly, from an operating and maintaining and sustaining going forward from that. You know, that's certainly true in the Brownfield case, and there's probably more of the instance of the Brownfield case than are in the Greenfield case. And, and definitely in North America, we're seeing that. Uh, but I think you're, what you're also finding is some places are actually going after the Greenfield aspect of things and they go, well, we're going to do this project. And of course, like any other capital project, you need to assess all the information you have. So, and that means it's may not, not even been designed yet. Or you may be taking a Brownfield application and just reproducing it again. Well, if you don't have the information on the Brownfield to reproduce it again, that comes to be a quandary. Mm -hmm. what, what about the significance and the difficulty uh, of extracting a justification for the migration in the first place? What role does the pre-planning work have on that justification and then the resultant analysis that would come out of a good pre-planning effort? Is there some sort of checklist and so forth that you could develop in, in that? I think we all wish we could have some kind of checklist, but unfortunately every process, everything is different. I think there's some fundamentals that we should go by, and I think we should look at our industry associations to look at that type of aspect of things and kind of get good practices out there. I think if you were to talk to any major OO, or EPCs, they have their own way of doing it. Um, in general, the answer is yes. I think if you look at not just automation controls, but just capital projects in general, you will do a due diligence up front of what you're gonna do, whether it's surveying the facility from land and mechanical aspects, but there's definitely on the automation side a need to do that as well too. And this, this issue occurs across multiple industries in the process world. Correct? Absolutely. Now, there may be bigger benefits depending on industry verticals. So maybe in power, it may not be as high because they're not changing 
changing as much, but I would also quanti uh, question that too because of all the resurgence of uh, gas facilities are required because the natural gas or the shale gale that's happening. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that uh, it's one industry better than the other, but there may be opportunities where you're constantly changing, maybe in the, uh, the uh, fine chemicals or special chemicals, you might see more changes to operations, which means that you have lack of information for those changes. Mm -hmm. And you need to get the answer right the first, at, the first, at the onset of the project, correct? Yes, and I think management is also asking for that. Not only is, are they looking for it from the pre-planning, but by having the information in place, then that helps them from a compliance and regulatory aspect of things. So when they're being asked when they're operating and running, do they have this in place? Can they manage it? Do they have management of change procedures? That type of stuff. But if you don't have the data to start from, it's kind of have to, hard to have a procedure in the first place. Mm -hmm. What about the issue of outsourcing? Can an owner operator indeed do some of this pre-work themselves? Or at least need to supervise it, I would suppose, even if they outsource this. Yeah, and today it is. I mean, a lot of companies outsource it to, like I said, EPC firms. So our goal is not to circumvent that process. It's more looking at what we can maybe offer to help reduce that scope at time, schedule, and then definitely the cost, as you mentioned earlier. So I think you're gonna see that more and more. I think that an O needs to do due diligence anyway by bringing their maintenance department involved in this whole process, as well as their project team, along with their partners, which may include the software vendors, there may be hardware vendors, there also may be uh, engineering constructors, or even the major automation contractors. So as a harmony, they need to attack the problem together. And then I think, you know, in talking to one of our um, key folks, is that there's gotta be incentives there, not just financial incentives, but incentives on how to get that information accurate the first time so you don't have the reworks that have to come down the line. Mm -hmm. What about this, uh, the concept, and I, I think I'd have to agree with the statement that instrumentation and control as a percent of the total capex in a large project is not overly significant. It probably is going to be less than 10, 10, 10 percent. Correct. And yet you always have to balance risk versus cost. The objective of all projects, of course, is to minimize cost, but you have to look at that risk factor. How significant is the risk associated with a migration of a DCS system? Seems to me to be exceedingly high because instrumentation is really at the top of the hierarchy of the disciplines in engineering. Russ, I would say on this one is by far risk is number one. I mean, I know cost is an area, but I think companies, if you would talk to them, you know, safety is number one and risk is definitely there. So pre-planning, and people do it. So it's not like we're suggesting that no one's doing this aspect. I think that we have to do a rigor <clears throat> on the pre-planning of how the effect will be and the knock-on effects of the decisions we make up front. So I think in that aspect of things, you're spot on is that risk will be important. And I think it has to start from the beginning of why we're doing the project in the first place. Mm -hmm. Beginning at the onset, get the, get the project defined correctly, otherwise you're gonna execute, no, it doesn't make any difference. Absolutely, you're blindly going into something. And, and again, I'm not gonna suggest that we, as an industry, go in blindly, because I think we do it a good job of making that occur. I think in the long run, what we wanna do is basically do it faster, better, with higher quality. Bill, thanks very much. We've been speaking with Bill Muldoon, Executive VP of Aviva, on the many multitude of issues involved with the migration of control and automation systems. Thank you. Thank you.